Take a step back to the early days when you were learning SEO. Grab your lunchbox. Think back about what you were taught about what SEO is and how it works. If you were like me, this was the picture that was painted for you. Three pillars of SEO. Relevance, authority and authority and trust, and website infrastructure and accessibility, which in turn equated to three primary practices of SEO. Content strategy, digital PR, and link building, and quote unquote technical SEO. Now, the problem with the things that we were taught in grade school is they're often wrought with inaccuracies, embellishments, so on and so forth. And this, this is not unique to uh, grade school or, or, or anything. It's, it's, this, is, this is also true of SEO. And just to give you know, a few examples of, and I don't know if this is, this is true in France, this is the, the American education system. It's, uh, you know, so-so. Um, but you know, we, we're often taught this story of, of, of Isaac Newton, you know, the discovering gravity sitting under an apple tree when an apple finally falls upon his head and, and Eureka, we've, we've discovered gravity. This, this never happened. Um, so he, he, he did discover gravity, uh, come up with the idea sitting in an apple orchard watching them fall, but there was, there was no Eureka moment with an apple falling on his head. Uh, it's, it's an embellishment. Um, in, in the English language, uh, we're, we're taught this, this rule of thumb, I, I, I before E, except after C. Um, it's, 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 this is generally true, uh, except there's, there's 193 exceptions to it. So uh, to those who are trying to learn English, uh, sorry. Um, there's this, this great story of, of, of Benjamin Franklin discovering electricity. He hangs a key from a kite. Uh, flies it in, a, in a, a lightning storm, and he, you know, he, obviously the, the, it's attracted to the lightning, and he discovers electricity. Um, this experiment existed; it's just there it was it was nothing about discovering electricity. Electricity was known for for many many years prior to that. This was this was about uh, proving the electrical nature of lightning. The, the connection between electricity and lightning wasn't known. Again, we, we were we were taught something incorrectly. Not far off, but not, not exactly accurate. Um, and just, just one, more, one more anecdote. I, re I remember in college uh, speaking to my friend who was, a, was an engineering major, um, and he, uh, he, he told me that there's, there's, there's this electrical principle, uh, Ohm's law, if everyone's familiar, which is you know, more or less, the, the, there's, it's an equation. It's, it's, it's accurate up until the point and when things get more complicated. Um, there's this, this, this idea of the infinite grid of resistors in which the whole, the whole principle, this law, falls apart. Um, and it's not that it's wrong, it's just it's, it's an oversimplification. And you, you, not until you get into higher level math do you, do you come to understand this. Um, this is true of SEO. Uh, I, I think that, that traditional picture that we were painted is, is a bit of an oversimplification. And this is especially true when it comes to, when it comes to technical SEO. Uh, so, again, back to what quote-unquote technical SEO has been painted as. It's, it's all about website infrastructure, search engine accessibility, crawling, indexing, ranking. How do we optimize for crawling so that something can be indexed and ultimately ranked? And in, in modern days, of course, with the prevalence and the, the, the increased usage of JavaScript, we throw in this, this nice little bucket of, of, of rendering in there. Um, and don't get me wrong, this, this is incredibly, incredibly important, and I'm, I'm not at all belittling this and what that is. If you have an e-commerce website and you are not optimally crawl, being crawled, pages are not getting indexed, you're missing out on revenue, and doing the traditional technical SEO tasks are very, very important to ensure that that doesn't happen, that you, you are, in fact, being crawled and indexed properly. It's not easy either. 
there's, there's a plethora of things that need to be done in order to make sure that, that this is done well. Uh, there's a lot of things to learn. It's, it's not, not at all simple. There's, there's a whole world of this. But in some ways, content might be a little bit more important. And hear me, hear me out. I know, I know we're talking about technical SEO, but if you have no content to rank, if that content is not relevant to the user, there's nothing to crawl, there's nothing to index, then there's nothing to rank. So to, to riff on this a little bit more, a lot of websites very easily get most of the way there to, to good enough technical SEO. You, um, you install WordPress on a website with the, the Yoast SEO plugin, that's pretty well SEO optimized for technical SEO. You have a broken website, you use a, a crawling tool like Screaming Frog, like, like OnCrawl. Um, it's gonna point out errors that you can then fix. It'll, it'll get you most of the way there. So getting content right is again, in some ways, more difficult than getting technical right because you know many websites are already there. And to, to drive this home, and I know, you know my, my website doesn't run on WordPress, but you know the majority of the web does run on WordPress. Um, the, I think WordPress holds something like 60% of the CMS market and 33% of all websites run on WordPress. That means that 33% of all websites have good enough technical SEO. So just to, again, to reiterate, most modern CMSs do the heavy lifting of technical SEO, and the barrier to getting technical SEO to a point that I, we call good enough is in some ways much lower than getting content right. So. There's no wonder you start to see articles like this pop up. This, this was an article from, from 2015 written by Claiborne Griffin. I, I actually used to work with Claiborne. Um, he said, the role of technical SEO should play its makeup. Now, the, uh, the article's a little bit inflammatory, a little bit controversial, uh, but there, there was a basic sentiment in here that I, I think that is not entirely correct. It's, it's a similar sentiment that I was just saying, you know, that, you know, at the point in which you know, technical SEO is done correctly, and uh, many websites do get it correctly, you know, content should really be playing a bigger role. But this is a very short-sighted vision of technical SEO, and I, I wanna sort of expand that definition, that traditional definition of what technical SEO is. So with, without further ado, let's redefine technical SEO. Um, I don't know if anyone's familiar, I, I, I run uh, an event, we're approaching our third year, uh, it's a purely technical SEO conference held in, in Boston, Massachusetts in the States, um, and the first year that we held this event, I had, uh, had Russ Jones uh, at Moz speak, and he did, he did a presentation on the state of technical SEO. And uh, we sort of actually worked through this together to come up with uh, a more modern definition of what technical SEO is. Uh, and I, I think this, this is very well representative of, of what technical SEO is, is how I view technical SEO and how I, I think others should start to think about it. Uh, he said that any sufficiently technical action undertaken with the intent to improve search results. So that's, again, much greater than crawling, indexing, and ranking. That, that opens the world to technical SEO. But Let's take it a little bit further. I posit that there are, in fact, four different types of technical SEO. Checklist technical SEO, general technical SEO, blurred responsibility technical SEO, and lastly, advanced applied technical SEO. It's getting into what is checklist technical SEO? Checklist technical SEO is very much in line with that traditional definition of technical SEO. It is things that pertain to crawling, indexing, ranking, rendering, um, with the caveat that many of the questions, the answers you're uh, coming up with, 
the problems you are solving, they, they can be templatized, they can be reduced to a series of checklists, they are very automatable, they can be handled by a tool set, and they are relatively low-skilled problems to solve. Uh, does the page have a canonical tag? No, yes, you need a canonical tag. Is the canonical tag crawlable, correctly formatted? It needs to be properly formatted. Uh, is it pointed at the, in the right place? Great. Is the canonical tag self-referencing? Should it be? So on and so forth. You answer a series of questions and you will get your technical SEO to a good enough place. Checklist technical SEO. And there's, again, this, we, we talked about this. There's, there's a number of tools that you can use. It will help you with this. Um, it's, 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 it's almost not a human problem, which means that it's, you know, it's, it's subject, again, to, to automation. The machines are coming. Um, if your job of an SEO is purely reliant on it, you know, AI is gonna, gonna be feeling, filling that void. OnCrawl is gonna be filling that void. Um, you need to think a little bit beyond this. Which brings us to the next type of technical SEO. This is general technical SEO, and this is the one that is most in line with that traditional definition. General technical SEO, again, is just like tech, uh, checklist technical SEO, has to do with crawling, indexing, ranking, rendering, um, but it's the higher skill version of technical SEO. It's, it's less subject to automation. Um, it requires uh, more skill sets, knowledge, in order to solve greater and more complex problems. I'm talking about things like finding and correcting <coughs> obscure crawler traps that are generated by a bug in your CMS, um, designing a maximally crawlable taxonomy, sound site architecture, server-side rendering, internal link analysis, so on and so forth. It's, it's the more complex, hired skill version of checklist technical SEO. And it requires a technical skill set in order to solve these problems. Third type of technical SEO, blurred responsibility technical SEO. And, and in some ways, this, this is not unique to technical SEO. This exists outside of technical SEO into the other you know, facets of, of our practice. Um, these are aspects of technical SEO. They're, they're complex, they, they required a technical acumen in order to facilitate, but they're not necessarily SEO tasks. They're, they're things like web performance optimization, which very well could be handled to a front-end web developer or a UX guy. Um, internal site search is, is a whole practice into itself. Structured data has nothing to do with SEO until Google makes it about SEO. Uh, advanced analytics, analytics is its own practice. These are things that SEOs often get stuck doing. They're hard, they take a lot of skill, but they are not necessarily SEO. Advanced applied technical SEO, and this, this is where the talk is mostly focused. Advanced tech, applied technical SEO are applying those technical skill sets to other areas of SEO beyond crawling, indexing, and ranking. I'm talking things about uh, SEO testing, experimental design, the adoption of brand new technologies. How does an SEO deal with a brand new technology on the market without any uh, prior documentation experience? There's, there's a level of, of other knowledge required in order to do that correctly. Uh, natural language processing, uh, applications of machine learning, data science, automation. This is advanced applied technical SEO. And when you bring these other things into technical SEO, it's, it starts to seem that all SEO can be technical SEO. I'll give some examples. link development, link building, not traditionally a technical SEO task, um, but if you do something like this Python script, which you can access on GitHub, um, maybe it is. 
Uh, so just, just to give an example of what this script does, you, you take an outlink report from Screaming Frog or another crawler, it will distill it down from full URLs to just the domain name. It will run the Moz Linkscape API to pull out the page authority and domain authority for that URL, the domain name. It will check the HTTP status code and then run a Whois API to see whether or not that domain name is available. That, that domain name is not available. Perhaps there's amazing content on that website that has been neglected that in your content strategy you should consider reproducing. It's you earned a lot of links after all. It's, it has some value to it, but the website is dead. Uh, I, I, as a hobby, I, I, I play a lot of board games, so I, I actually I, I operate a, a board game blog. So I, I, you know, I ran this script. I found, you know, cardboardcrusader.com is not registered, but you know, a domain snatcher has has grabbed that and is charging, you know, what is it, 1,800 U.S. dollars. I'm I'm not gonna you know, I'm not gonna pay 1,800 U.S. dollars, but you know, there's there's several pieces of content that lived on that website that are now dead that I'm 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 now reproducing. Happy about that. Um, so again, link building, not traditionally a technical SEO task, can in, in fact be technical SEO if you frame it a little bit differently. On page SEO, this is the ant uh, antithesis of technical SEO, right? Like there's, there's, there's off page SEO, and then there's on page SEO, and then there's like technical SEO, which is all about you know, the, how the website is, is built. So again, another, another Python example. There's the GitHub link. Feel free to use this. Uh, and this, this is actually not too complex. You can do qu quite a bit with natural language processing. This, this is very simply using Google's own natural language API. Um, so I know there was some talk in the prior session about, you know, the, the, the entities that Google pulls out of, of content and, and relates to it. So it, it's not a terrible idea to use Google's own, you know, uh, entity recognition technology on content. Uh, so you need to have enabled the Google's natural language API on this. Um, you insert SERP data. I, I think by default the script just takes a CSV input, but, you know, you, you may choose to do this more programmatically using a rank checking API or, or via search consoles or, or, or uh, whatever data source you like. Uh, and it will, it, the idea is you pull in the top 10, 20, 30 search results of a SERP, use that as a, you know, a small corpus of content, extract the entities, do some, some basic analysis on uh, term frequencies, um, use Google's own salient score about how related it is to that topic, uh, and start to look at you know, what content where the gaps are in, in your existing content. Is it that entity being mentioned? Should it be mentioned? Google finds it highly relevant to your topic. Technical SEO. Content ideation. It's the most technical thing of them all. I love it. Um, also a big fan of Reddit. I'm a big Redditor. Um, I run uh, our big SEO and our, our tech SEO on Reddit. Uh, I'm on Reddit more hours than I should probably admit. Um, it's, it's also a, a great source of data, incredible source of data. So again, here's a Python script. You simply log in with your with the Reddit credentials. You can make a dummy account, doesn't matter. You specify a CSV name as an output. Um, you can choose one of the, the sorting methods. Uh, so Google, uh, Reddit will, will uh, sort content according to a few different labels, uh, whether it's hot, so like trending. Uh, if it's top content, uh, essentially it's gotten the most upvotes or, or new. Uh, so you choose your sorting method. Uh, if it's more recent content, you'll choose new. If you're just looking for the top content, you'll choose top, so on and so forth. Uh, you can specify a specific subreddit, sub, if, if no one's familiar with uh, Reddit already, subreddits are, are niche communities and there are niche communities about every topic imaginable. So you can limit it to one of these niche communities or you can choose to look at across of all of Reddit. 
and then you, you put in keywords. Maybe that's, that's a keyword related to your website. Maybe it's a little bit broader. It's how to, it's where can I, board games, etc. And then hit enter, it will, it will output you know, the most performant content and it will tell you how many upvotes it got. You can use this for, for many, many different things. Um, to give one example, I, I think as SEOs we become too reliant on, on search volume as a metric. Search volume is omitting so much. Pure volume, it's, it has, has no context. So uh, I used to operate, I'm also a big fan of horror movies, I used to operate a horror movie website. Uh, so when I was, was doing the content strategy for my horror movie website, uh, you know, the first thing like any SEO I did was I, I looked at search volume. I looked at search volume across, um, these are all different various horror movie directors that you, you might imagine would appear on a horror movie website. Um, so the most search volume have uh, Guillermo del Toro, um, George Romero, Alfred Hitchcock, John Carpenter, Wes Craven, so on and so forth, all sorted by search volume. Now, our horror is, is a great niche community for, for horror movie aficionados. And these are people that are hardcore into horror movies. They are not the general populace. So when I put in these various horror movie directors into Reddit and saw how often they were mentioned, we saw something a little bit different. So um, a director like Alfred Hitchcock, who has very, very high search volume, is not that popular amongst the truly passionate horror movie enthusiasts. So if we look at him in terms of the number of Reddit upvotes he received, he's, he's all the way at the tail end there. He's, he's, he's not well represented in terms of volume on Reddit. So, so what do you do? You, you take this data that you've, you've extracted and you sort of try to line it up. Probably a better option is um, George Romero, who is, is also well represented in terms of search volume, but amongst horror movie aficionados, which we're benchmarking based on, on the interest on Reddit, um, somewhere between two and three for both. Sort of technical SEO, that analysis. Continuing with, with content ideation. And you know, these, these are just examples, but I, I'm talking about coming up with this stuff. You know, the, 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 the process in which you come up with this, thinking technically about these type of things, that's, that's, that's technical in nature in itself. YouTube subtitles for content ideas. YouTube video, is, it's a great source of content, it's a great source of ideas, but it's, it's often left unexplored because it's not text content, it's not crawled in the same way. So let's, let's get at that, let's, let's use that data. So uh, built a little Python script, you can input a YouTube playlist, um, it will download all the auto-generated subtitles, and then you do something like remove the stop words, and then do like a frequency analysis on like which words are most mentioned. Um, and then you, you, you analyze that. So uh, for instance, I, I was playing around with it and you know, uh, Moz put up the entire MozCon 2016 uh, itinerary. They have all the videos up there for free. Um, and I just wanted to see you know, what, what was mentioned most in you know, MozCon 2016. Uh, you know, no surprise, people were, people were talking about content, it was, it's Moz. Uh, also, really, we're, we're talking about how, how, how much everyone's friends and being very, very positive. It's, it's so nice. Um, right there. Um, so, it's sort of technical SEO. Automation. Um, spend time doing what matters, right? In order to do that, we have to, to automate the small things, the things that are wastes of time. Um, that's, that's a very technical process. Uh, so here's, here's one example automation workflow and there's, I, I, I do so much with automation and it's, it's, it's a, I, I think it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's, it's helped me do what matters more, um, an incredible amount. Uh, so this, this, this is sort of neat. This, um, the Wayback Machine, archive.org has, has an API and what you can do is you, you put in a domain name 
and it will list out all the historical URLs that it knows of. So it, it, this connects to the, the Wayback Machine API. It will um, run this through uh, Goose, which uh, Goose, Goose, Goose attempts to extract just the, the, the body content. It, it pulls out the, the boilerplate stuff, like uh, it omits the, you know, the navigation, things you might find in, in the footer. Uh, it's just the, the, the most important content. So it'll extract the most important content, um, and then it will extract the text from the actual Wayback Machine archive. And then you can use crawl data to compare what's live on the current website, compare it what was historically on that website, and uh, using uh, Spacey's uh, pre-trained uh, convolutional neural network, uh, tell you how similar that old piece of content is to the new piece of content, and voila, you have uh, automatic 301 redirect mapping. So I just chose, this was uh, a lawyer's website that I, I think I searched Law, lawyer web uh, redesign because you know redesigns always go so well, and you know you know here's one example where they have like no 301 redirects to the old one, uh, ran it, and you know there, you see the score all the way on to the right is, is a similarity metric, uh, it's a percentage. So you know the, this this could serve as uh, if you choose the most similar content to the, to the most similar content, that's their their 301 redirect mapping strategy. Technical SEO. Bulk meta uh, descriptions. So if you ever work on a large website, we all want you know, unique meta descriptions, but you know, it's, it's challenging when we work, look, work on large scales. Uh, so you know, there's th th this is sort of a simple example. There's people doing you know, great work with uh, natural language generation. Uh, this, this is a very simple method of using summarization, but uh, essentially, what this is, is you input a list of URLs, specify an output file, it uses the, some, some of the, 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 uh, the simpler summarization methods and uh, to create that as a proxy for a brief description of what that website or the web page is. So um, it'll go through, try to summarize it, uh, and then you have to do a little bit of some, some custom work in which you're like, uh, okay, this is a great start. Um, I, I need to either you know shorten it. The the bit of text is too long. Um, it's not a, actually a, the best representation. If I add a few more words to the end or the beginning, maybe it'll be a little bit better. Uh, but but it does take out some of that work. Um, and I you know, I, I wrote about this on search engine land. If you want to dig up the article, and here's me doing it on my board game website. And some of it's junk and some of it's not. But it, you know it saves you some time at the end of the day. Uh, and then you. You know, throw it into like a. This is my tool where you, uh, you you check the pixel length on all those things in bulk. Let's use that. It's technical SEO. Um, keyword research. I mean, you can't. Keyword research isn't technical. Unless it is. Um, Persona-based keyword research. That that definitely doesn't sound technical. Um, if you're a, a large agency like the one I work for, then you have fancy, expensive tools, and I understand not everyone has that, but we do. Uh, so uh, we have uh, access to Hitwise. Hitwise has uh, clickstream data, so they, they have clickstream data that is, that is mirrored, uh, mirrored with uh, various persona, demographic, psychographic data points. So if I, I know that uh, for anyone who searches board games, what is the composition of that audience? And I can compare that to the general populace of people on the web. Uh, the problem with this tool is that it, it, it doesn't allow you to do it sort of in bulk. You have to do one keyword at a time, and it's slow, and it's tedious. Uh, so I, w I, wanted, I wanted to, every time I created a keyword research document, I wanted to see what that looked like in mass. So, um, and this, this is a very clunky script. It's available to you if you have Hitwise access. Uh, you have to do a cross-tab report in an audience view with sort of predefined criteria. Um, you input your list of keywords, and then it, it does browser simulation via Selenium. Um, but the end result is, you know, you, you, you have all the different uh, demographic information across your entire keyword set. I used, you know, various uh, healthy eating, keto diet, and, uh, and you can sort of just visualize it. It's a very simple example. Um, but if I'm creating content to make sure that this is matching the type of content that my, 
that the people that are interested in it are, are, will consume. Uh, it's, it's a great way to do that, and it is technical SEO. More, more rep uh, automation, and I, I just, I just want to, I sort of created this as a, a secondary category because uh, if you're not already working with automation, uh, doing reporting and dashboarding is probably like your first step. Um, it's, it's its own task. Uh, I, I remember when I first got into SEO how much time I spent working in Excel putting together for my clients, you know, very clunky, you know, ex uh, Excel dashboards. Uh, uh, nowadays, no one should be doing that with, with Data Studio and, and other things available to you. We, we're a big fan of using Tableau. Um, do something a little bit more dynamic. Uh, but in order to do that, um, it really behooves you to have a data store. Uh, so this is, I, I put this script together when uh, the new Search Console API had just come out. Uh, and what this does is it, you, you can add a cron job to this and via the API it will automatically back up all the, the search query, the, the, the search analytics reports in Search Console uh, to a SQL database. And then you can then ingest that and display that visually via you know, Tableau, Google Data Studio, whatever you use, Power BI, et cetera. Um, and then you, you, you make some, some fancy SEO dashboards also ingesting other things. That's just an example. Analytics data, uh, have some concept of whatever your KPIs are, so on and so forth. Technical SEO. OK, so a lot of these examples have been very code heavy. and, and I. I, I I don't want it to be that. I want it to, to, to I want to demonstrate to you that it, it, you can do be a, a technical SEO. You can use this definition of technical SEO, and it's not only about the coding. I think one of the, the best ways uh, that I can demonstrate that is with A/B testing, SEO experimentation. Um, it's extremely, extremely important. I think uh, far too often as SEOs, uh, we rely on the status quo. We 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 use best practices. We um, do things that we were taught uh, in SEO grade school uh, without any sort of validation. Uh, so testing is the cure to that. You need to, you need to test things. Uh, and I think you'll be surprised when you do what you'll find out uh, if, if that best practice was, was truly the best recommendation, if it was truly the solution. Uh, you see sometimes huge lifts in traffic uh, sometimes the largest lifts I've seen uh, as a result of actually performing tests. Um, and th there's, there's certain types of live tests that I'm talking about, but there's, there's also uh, other types of experimentation that help you understand how search engines work, how Google works, um, that are also valuable. Uh, and you can do this uh, not only by actually implementing them, but by, by writing testing specs, working with your engineering teams uh, to, to design that experiment and they can go implement it. You don't have to be the one to implement it. Um, this is about you know, following the scientific method, um, taking accurate data measurements, and just going about this in, in, in a, a, a good way. This, this is technical SEO. Um, and very, very simple example, if we were to test like whether uh, we, we wanted to do a, across a very large website, say an e-commerce website, um, if we wanted to change the title tags and see if you know, we reduced uh, an, an improvement in click-through rate, uh, you'd, you'd have a control group, uh, a group of URLs that we've left untouched, and then we'd create a sort of systematic templatized variants um, and, and group those together and see what the lift would be. Um, if you haven't read this, uh, th this is from, from Etsy. Uh, they, they go through how to sort of, how they started to think about it. I, I recommend giving it a read. There's also uh, the guys at Distilled, uh, that you know Tom, Tom's company. They've they've done amazing work about furthering experimentation in SEO. Um, uh, and I think in the early days, their platform used a, a, a causal impact, which is a library provided for by by Google. Uh, so if you if you want to actually implement that, it's a, it's a Python script that uh, has has actually ported that over from R. I uh, just prefer to work with Python nowadays. Um, but it, it's 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 pretty simple. You, you know, you put in um, some b basically before and after data, and it will will tell you whether uh, it was a, was a true lift or not. Um, and this is sort of just this, this was an example that we we sort of wrote a spec for for a client website where we wanted to understand how if we couldn't run a live test, how a search engine would behave. 
Uh, so this was uh, experimenting, experimenting with how um, you know, it would handle uh, some JavaScript overwriting the raw HTML. So we, we, we created a page that had you know, some content. I think it was a bit of like a paragraph text, uh, some internal linking. Uh, we used dummy text in a million different places so that there wasn't anything biasing the search results, other signals. Uh, and then we had JavaScript right over, you know, the, the, these various uh, features of the website, and we would just, you know, we, we we monitored it. We saw how the search engines behaved. This this is also very valuable, and it is technical SEO. So, so there's certainly this this common thread. Um, coding is 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 a fundamental skill when we're talking about that last type of technical SEO, the advanced applied technical SEO. Um, and you know some other. These are my my twins. Um, they're they're four months old now. This this was when they were born. Um, there's something to be said about learning to code if you don't know coding already. Uh, one, it's it's extremely valuable. But your children are learning to code in school. These are young children. Um, there's no reason why your young children should know how to code when it's becoming basic literacy for everyone else. So it's just to light a fire under you if you don't already know how to code. There's, here's some impetus to learn because you know, they're going to enter the workforce eventually. And, you know, maybe if they have better skills than us, then between them and the robots, who knows? It's very dismal. Um, furthermore, you know, I, I emphasize this with the, the last bucket, advanced technical SEO. Uh, but this is also really important for other types of technical SEO, like the general technical SEO. I don't know, like just highlighting I gave these examples, like finding crawler traps in your CMS, server-side rendering. Learning how to code and understanding how that all works, whether or not you're actually implementing the code yourself or working with a developer, but learning how to code is going to help you with these things. It's very important. It's not the only way of going things, but it, 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 it is important. Um, which brings me to a point. If, if technical SEO is truly this, this grand thing that extends beyond what the traditional definition is, then I, I think you should be thinking about technical SEO a little bit differently. Uh, not investing in technical SEO itself, but investing in technical SEOs. But, you know, not everyone's there yet, right? This, this, this might be a little bit scary. Maybe, you know, your, your staff don't know how to code. Uh, maybe they don't quite have the technical skill sets yet. Uh, so I, I want to I want to leave you with some avenues of, of getting there, thinking about either in terms of enhancing your education or how to hire for these type of people. Um, when we talk about hiring technical SEOs, I think you're looking for people that are adept in utilizing their technical aptitude and skills to aid, improve, and enhance both technical and non-technical SEO tasks. You want critical thinkers, problem solvers. In some ways, you're looking for the similar traits that a good engineer might have. Um, and in my opinion, you know, that's not, it's not about the code. You don't want an engineer that's hyper-focused on the code. You want someone who has a strong ability to problem solve, think critically, the ability to communicate and explain complex technical topics to, for people who may not understand them. You want someone who's creative. Now, if you want to go the route of learning how to code, it's simpler than you may think. I remember I, I, I was, uh, I'm a self-taught coder. I, I learned how to code at a young age by taking books out of the library. It's so much easier nowadays. You can, there's a million websites that will aid in you teaching it. They're interactive. They're, they're relatively simple to navigate. Um, but I want you to not fixate too much on the programming language. I, I often hear people say, you know, like I, you know, I did, I did a little bit of programming in college. You know, maybe it was, you know, BASIC or another programming language, and I don't know what's going on. What is, what is JavaScript? What is Python? I, I don't think you need to worry so much. Uh, very much when we learn to program, the concepts, the logic, is transferable, and it's, it's just a matter of, you know, picking up vocabulary and and. And a few adjacent concepts. It's very, very transferable. So I, I would not worry so much about the language uh, that you, you may or may not know. Um, but if you must pick a programming language, 
Um, I think there's, there's two ways to be thinking about it in terms of SEO. There's, there's the data analysis path. Uh, so that's the one I, I uh, gravitate towards. Uh, and if you want to emphasize data analysis, data science in your work, uh, I recommend the you know, Python programming language. You can certainly use uh, like R or something, but I, I think the, uh, Python's a, just a little bit more robust. There's a little bit more use cases, and the syntax is very, very simple. It reads almost like plain English or at some times. Um, but if you're more interested in, in web development, how your websites are constructed, um, building websites, then the, the web development path, I, I think JavaScript is a very robust option. You can build back-end interfaces using Node.js. You can handle the front-end. Um, and either of these options are totally appropriate and will cover much ground. Other, uh, other uh, recommendations about how to go about learning to code or how to train your staff, how they should be approaching it. Um, I think it's best to have practical goals to Lean Story. Uh, don't learn for the sake of learning. Uh, you need to apply and build something. Now, uh, in terms of pedagogy, uh, this is a bit controversial. I think in academic settings, we're, we're used to you know, learning concept from the ground up, um, but you know, we're all working professionals. This is a slower method of learning, and we need results now, and there's quite a bit of learning that can occur by doing. Uh, so that's my, my personal recommendation. Learn by building, by doing. Um, leverage the online material, uh, tutorials, the, the online coursework, the MOOCs, uh, Code Academy, which is, I, I mentioned this already, Code Academy is this interactive interface to learning how to code. It supports uh, a myriad of programming languages uh, and even more basic like markup languages like HTML if you don't know that already. Don't be afraid to look up examples. Uh, if you don't know how to do something, there's, there's already a lot of examples out there. GitHub is like this like social network for developers, and they, they just love to share code. You know, use those examples as, as uh, if you're stuck. Uh, Stack Overflow is a question and answer website for, for programmers. Um, and if you have people on your staff that already know how to code, you know, go to them. Ask them for help. If you're stuck on a problem and that happens, that's, that's the, like, the nature of programming, is you get stuck on problems and you don't know how to get to the next point. Have someone else look at it. Have them give some advice. It's more important that you sort of understand how it works and then you can problem solve uh, and solve the, that same problem again and it'll be easier next time. Now, to, to get back to you know, where we started a little bit, um, we sort of, we asked this question, is, is content in some ways more important than, than technical SEO? And I, I think, you know, as we, we've demonstrated, uh, it's, it's, it's not more important. And I, I wouldn't say that technical SEO is more important than content either. Um, but I would start to frame this a little bit differently. Um, if we redefine technical SEO, and all of SEO can sort of find its way into technical work, we gave all these examples in which on-page SEO could be technical in nature, content ideation, automation. We've redefined it so that that Venn diagram I showed in the beginning uh, sort of looks like a cartoon character, a little face, but um, you know, content strategy, digital PR, link building, that can all be encapsulated into this world of technical SEO. And again, invest in technical SEOs. Thank you.